So, a couple of weeks ago, the This Week at Bungie post, we were informed about a handful of sandbox updates. One very notable weapon buff coming will be for the linear fusion rifles, increasing the precision damage by 15%, which is pretty notable, and increasing the reserves ammo by 20%. Now, with all of this talk about buffs to linear fusion rifles, will it be enough to make them good in the current sandbox? If you have any other things that you would like to see tested or analyzed, feel free to join the Discord where we talk all things Destiny and not Destiny. I also stream over on Twitch from time to time and usual start times are around 7pm CST. You can find all the links to these down below. Now let's look at other non-double special weapon DPS options currently sitting in meta. All tests done with Izanagi are calculated with the time it takes to do four loops of the damage pattern, such as four 4x honed edge shots with three grenade launcher shots per honed edge shot. First up, we have Izanagi's Burden paired with a heavy grenade launcher. In this case, I'm using Interference. For this damage method to be efficient, it requires actively swapping between the weapons while waiting for Izanagi to be usable again. The pattern being 4x honed edge shot, reload the honed edge, swap to your grenade launcher, shoot 3 shots, and sprint swap back to Izzy and repeat. This method also requires a grenade launcher to have auto loading holster for the pattern to be seamless. In all of our general damage testing, we use a Lost Sector boss on Nessus. Now it's time for the damage number tests. For this combo, it's one 4x Izanagi Honed Edge shot is about 99.5k. And three grenade launcher shots total up to about 87.6k without full court. And with full court at full range, 102,000 damage. So for those numbers, 4 4x honed edge shots is about 398k and 12 grenade launcher shots with full court fully active is about 408k totaling to 806,000 damage it takes about 14 and a half to 15 seconds to get the entire damage cycle off so if you take 806,000 divided by 15 seconds to be gracious this ends up being around 53.7k dps Next up, we have Izanagi paired with a rocket launcher, doing the same method as the grenade launcher swap, but with an auto-loading rocket. For this weapon combo, it starts with the rocket being shot, then hot swapping to the Izanagi, shooting it, reloading a 4x, swapping to the rocket after auto-loading procs, which you have to wait for the audio cue, and then repeating the cycle. There is a definite margin for error in this process because if you swap too early back to your rocket launcher before auto loading procs it will ruin your dps numbers immensely speaking of numbers now let's talk about the numbers so if you take the 398k from the izzy we calculated before you can add 348k for the rocket damage this includes impact and explosion for the rocket itself that totals up to 746,000 damage. And this rotation takes a total of 14 seconds to fully work out. With those numbers, you can take 746k divided by 14 seconds, and that gives you a total of 53.3k DPS. Well, let's dig into some linear fusion combo build. First, we have Izanagi plus the linear fusion threaded needle with the perks auto loading and vorpal weapon for this combo it goes a 4x shot then two shots from your threaded needle and hot swap and repeat every other 4x shot you have to wait for the auto loading proc as you would only have one shot in the magazine of your linear fusion rifle if you are not using enhanced battery which i recommend using accelerated coils for the decreased charge time now take this into account, the lower your charge time goes, the lower your impact goes with it. This does not matter how you lower the charge time, it will go down hand in hand with it. For this combo, the Izanagi will be doing the same 398k, and the linear fusion shots will be doing 347k, but with the buff, it will be 
now at 399k on all precision hits and you will end up with around 797k or if you add boss spec on top of the linear fusion rifle you will have 828k for the total damage now if you take that 828k divided by the time it takes for the full rotation with a small grace period for error it's about 17 seconds for the full rotation equaling out to be 48.7k dps yes this is lower but in the end you will have more damage if the damage window somehow becomes larger than that which in some instances it can be greater than 20 to 25 seconds and to follow up yes this combo does have less damage than the izanagi gl rotation but it will generously benefit with that longer damage window opportunities as well as if a boss were to have a higher crit modifier such as the last wish bosses kali and shirochi finally the one you've been waiting for the big daddy linear fusion rifle sleeper simulant no swapping is needed for this dps which is a good thing i would consider this to be the safest and most reliable in terms of skill set because it doesn't require any skill set doesn't require any special movement hot swap no nothing all you gotta do is shoot a crit and if there's a divinity involved just shoot the bubble it ain't that hard all of this requires that you have the catalyst completed as that increases the charge time as well as the number of shots you get currently sleeper does 61.5k on crit and after the buff it will do 70.8k per shot this calculation is done with the total shots of 12 meaning four full magazines it currently holds three in the mag the buff to the reserves should make the full reserves 13 without any bonus reserves on the chest piece following that the reserves mod on the chest piece should also make it to 15 a single mod of reserves now this full rotation takes about 18 seconds to get off this also has a luna faction well with it and you can also add in linear fusion loader to essentially hit the reload speed cap total damage for the 12 sleeper shots equals about 850k on the nose and take that over the 18 seconds you get around that 50k dps mark not great but not terrible it's middle of the road good dps total damage number it beats out every other dps combo but in terms of duration that's how it's going to be decided on how well it performs on the other hand you're not doing any swapping this is a singular weapon so there is the possibility you can swap to another weapon and just use that after you're out of sleeper personally i think after all of the buffs to linear fusion rifles sleeper is going to be the go-to meta dps in terms of vault of glass atheon just like it was in d1 for your generic player if they have the catalyst complete and such so with it not requiring a whole lot of effort and all you have to do is shoot one spot over and over again it's easily the safest and most reliable form of dps now let's look at all of these combos comparatively between the three izzy swap combos and a sleeper overall with using these weapons for the rotation listed total damage wise sleeper wins there are other things to take into account whether it's damage window duration sustained damage is better the longer the window it is and it also depends on how the how an encounter plays but with vog coming up in season of the splicer this is primarily aimed at atheon damage phase which is in total 30 seconds for times vengeance sleeper turns out to be the safest and easiest option in this case for the everyday player and you don't need to be super optimized in terms of weapon rotations and ability to use them 
it also gives you more than enough time to move about and use your super for buffs and such. Now, there are some honorable mentions that were not on this list. Primarily, Whisper of the Worm, Xenophage, and the combo that is Anarchy and a Sniper. Whisper is consistent if the perk doesn't bug out on you and if you do not miss a shot. Xenophage is almost S tier for Titans. It is good for Hunters and atrocious for Warlocks. And the last combo being the Sniper with Anarchy is very good in terms of lengthy damage window, meaning where it excels outside of that 25, 30 second damage window to where normally with Sleeper, you would run out of ammo after 20 seconds. What do you use after that? In that case, Anarchy has a very good ammo economy. Back it up. And now don't even bother to ask about Queen Breaker and Arbalest with these linear fusion buffs. It's just not worth it. They're not good. With all of this in mind, I think Sleeper stands the greatest chance in terms of making the meta for boss DPS, especially with the upcoming addition of Vault of Glass with Atheon. This is my full analysis of what I would like to consider the DPS meta outside of the shotgun and sword ranges. If you think I missed something, please feel free to put it down in the comments. Don't forget to hit the sub and like buttons if you enjoyed, and I will catch you in the next one.